Hello and welcome again. In the last lesson, we looked at the income tax pro forma and we listed down uh, all the sources of income on which we have to pay tax. And we, if, uh, if you remember, we also divided the income into three sections, non-savings, savings and dividends. In this lesson, we will uh, look at some more sources of income uh, on which we don't have to pay any tax. The income sources which we listed in the income tax pro forma, if you remember, were the ones on which we have to pay tax. That's why we listed them in the income tax pro forma. Today we will look at uh, the income tax components which we, uh, we don't have to pay any tax. Also, if you remember, uh, we made the pro forma and after that uh, we did not do anything further on it. We, not, uh, we do not know yet that how to calculate the income tax. Although you can make the pro forma, but you don't know how to calculate the tax and how it works. Today we will see that as well. Uh, that how we can calculate the income tax. All right. Now, if you please download the lecture notes, they are available on our website. If you please download the lecture notes, and uh, uh, because we need it now, and uh, I will share the screen with you, so that you can uh, see the lecture notes with me. Here you go. If you see now, it says uh, chapter one, uh, income tax. Now it says that tax year. Tax year starts on sixth uh, of April and and ends on 5th of April next year. I showed you uh, our tax year works from 6th of April to 5th of April. Uh, that's the date which we have to stick ourselves to. After that it says income tax format. Uh, that's what we made the made income tax uh, pro forma and it has divided the income into non-saving savings and dividends. Trading income, uh, it is earned from the business. We saw it uh, in the last lesson. It goes into non-savings. Pension too will go into non-savings. Uh, however, interest income uh, will go into savings because we earned it on the savings. All right, because we put the savings into the bank to earn some interest, and that's why uh, it will go into the savings. If you remember, I told you that interest is received gross. Uh, sorry, net interest is re received net. That's why we need to gross it up, multiplied by 100 and divided by 80. All right, uh, and it goes into the savings. After that, it says property income, and uh, that's the income which we earn from property. It will go also into the non-savings, so will employment income, uh, it could be salary or anything else. After that it says dividends, uh, dividends will go into the dividends if you remember, and these are received net, we will need to multiply it by 100 divided by 90 because we have paid 10% tax on it, but we need to put the gross amount into the income tax, final figure will be the gross one. But we need to take the net figure, multiply it by 100 and divide it by 90. All right. Uh, we'll do the total of it and we'll deduct the uh, interest paid or I said it, it is called deductible interest if you remember. So we will deduct first from non-savings income then from savings and after that uh, we will deduct it from dividends if it is still left. Alright, uh, then comes the net income before personal allowance uh, and uh, we deduct the personal allowance out of it and we personal allowance first will be deducted from non-savings then from savings and after all after that, uh, it will be deducted from the uh, dividends. We saw how to calculate personal allowance and how to reduce, calculate the reduced personal allowance, if you remember. All right. And after that, it says uh, taxable income. All right. Now, that is the income on which we have to pay tax. But we don't know yet how to calculate tax. All right. After, the, after that, it says in the note, it says a starting rate band. Now, whatever the final figure is on which we have to pay tax, we don't have to pay tax at the straight rate, at the simple rate, but we will have to uh, pay tax according to the different banding, all right? That's what it says in the notes. It says starting rate band, all right? So if your income is, uh, say, 5,000 pounds, you will come into the starting rate band and uh, your income will be taxed in according to this band. Starting rate band starts from one to one pound to 5,000 pounds, and if it is from non-saving income, you will have to pay tax at the 20% rate. If it is out of the savings income, it will you will not need to pay any tax because its it rate is zero percent. If it is out of dividends, then we'll have to pay tax at the rate of ten percent. If your income is at the starting rate band, all right. Uh, if your income is in the basic rate band, say for example, if your income is in the basic rate band, uh, and you you will have to pay tax twenty percent in the non-savings, twenty percent in the savings, and ten percent in the dividends, all right. And the basic rate is from five thousand one. To 31,785. Now these tables, these banding will be given to you in the exam tables. Now as I said to you earlier as well, I might have explained in the previous uh, lecture 
the first few pages of the exam paper will consist on the tax tables and allowances and that's where uh, these tables will also be given to you so you need you do not need to remember these tables All right wherever the first band ends the next band starts on the next figure so if you see first band was starting weight band it is from one pound to five thousand pound so it is ending on five thousand pound next band will start from five thousand one likewise if you see the next band uh, after uh, basic rate band next band is higher rate band it is starting from 31786 because the previous one ended on 31785 so, so higher rate band from 31786 to 150000 pounds and uh, after that it says in the bracket it says 118215 what's that now it is simply the difference between 150000 and 31785 it is calculated just for the ease of yourself uh, so you do not need to uh, take the difference between these two. Say for example, if your income is 150,000 pounds, what you need to do is you will have to uh, divide the tax according to different bandings. And that's how your tax will be calculated. I will show you in a minute as well. All right? And after that, it says additional rate band, and the tax rates are also given for the additional rate banding. All right? That's how the tax liability is calculated. After that, it says tax deducted at source. Now, tax which we have already paid, if you remember, we paid 10% tax on dividends, where we will deduct that from uh, and liability, and 20% tax on interest as well. PAY, 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 pay as you own. It is the tax which you have paid on your salary, which will also be deducted. Right? And after that, it will say income tax payable or receivable if it is in the negatives. If it is in the positive, it will be payable. Alright? Now, after that, if you Please come to next where it says uh, uh, income jointly income on jointly held property. Please, if you come to income on jointly held property, please uh, in the notes I've shared with you on the screen as well. Uh, if property is held jointly by a married couple, say for example you and your wife own some property, then income will be divided 50-50. Unless you say to Hitomasi that, you know, we want to divide the income according to our own uh, requirements, then Hitomasi will say, all right. Otherwise, if, it, if the question is silent, please assume that income will be shared according, uh, shared 50-50. All right. Note one after that, it says interest income. Now, interest income uh, could be received gross or could be received net, I told you. Now, this is the income, income interest income received net of 20% tax. The first one is the income which will be received net, which need to be grossed up, all right? So what's that? Uh, first one is bank interest, building society interest. Building society interest is simply the interest which you pay when you put some money into the building society when you're buying a home or something else. Then it says interest on debentures of an unlisted company or unquoted or unlisted is the same thing. Uh, 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 when you uh, interest on debentures of an unlisted company. So when you're uh, getting some interest, right? When you're earning some interest on the debentures of an unlisted company, then it will be received net and you need to gloss it up when you are putting in the income tax pro forma. When it is from a listed company, then you don't need to gloss it up. It is already given gross in the question. But right? please make sure you remember it because one of these will definitely going to come into your question. It is very, very highly likely. Then it says income, interest income received gross, so no grossing up needed. The following income received gross without deduction of tax at source and must not be grossed. Which, are, which ones are these? National Saving and Investment Bank account in, in, in interest on in government securities or gilts. Now gilts are simply a government security. If you buy some bonds from the government, it could be gilts. But uh, you don't need to worry about it. It will be given to you in the exam. So gilt, wherever the word gilt comes, it is go government security. Then it says interest on the debentures of a listed company. As I said, if it is listed, then it will be received gross if it is unlisted then you need to gross it up multiplied by 100 divided by 80. next section is called exempt income now these are the sources of income which might be given to you in the exam in the question paper uh, although these are sources of income but you do not need to pay any tax because these will be exempt whenever such thing comes into the exam question please indicate to the examiner that this is exempt source of income do not just ignore it please because if you just ignore it thinking that it is exempt, although you know it that it is exempt and you are leaving it, but examiner does not know it that you know it, it is exempt. So please make sure you make the examiner realize that you know it is exempt. All right? 
by stating in the question, this is exempt income, whatever the in income is, this is exempt income, that's why we do not need to pay any tax on it. All right? That's how you do it. In the case, if you're making an income tax pro forma or something else, then please write down that source of income, which is exempt, and uh, the figure must be zero. So if you're showing it by zero, then it means that it is exempt, and examiner will give you a mark. If you just ignore it, an examiner will not give you any marks for this. All right? Now, what are the sources of income which are exempt? Income from savings certificates issued by National Savings and Investment Bank. Uh, bonds, uh, premium bonds are exempt. Individual savings account, ISA, it is also exempt. And uh, then it says the child benefit. Uh, child benefit simply is a benefit given by the, uh, given by the government uh, to the kids, uh, to the parents to look after their kids. Uh, we will see in the next lecture about this, what the child benefit is in details. But for now, it is the benefit given by government to the parent to look after the kids. If you receive that, it is also exempt source of income. All right. After that, it says note three, uh, deductible interest. Now, in the income tax pro forma, if you remember, we deducted some interest. So what sort of interest is that? It is a special kind of interest. So if you took some loan and you use that loan uh, to do certain things, then interest paid on that loan will be deductible from the income tax pro forma, all right? So what sort of purposes are these? If loan taken from any of the following purposes, it says any of the following pose, it's not pose, there's a mistake in the, in the notes, please rectify it, it is purpose. If loan is taken for any of the following purposes, then the interest paid on such loan can be deducted. So what are these purposes? So if you took the loan and you invested in the partnership business, then interest paid on that loan will be deductible in the income tax pro forma. Likewise, if you use the loan to buy the plant and machinery for employment purposes or business purposes, it is also deductible. If you use it uh, to buy the shares in investment uh, employee controlled company, sure. so you invested in employee controlled company, employee controlled company is simply a company uh, where, uh, you, uh, where the employees are the owners of the company. And uh, if it is invested in the cooperatives, then that also will be deductible. All right, you need to remember these things because it can come into your exam paper. Next note is personal allowance. Uh, we just leave it because we have already seen how to calculate the personal allowance. Just one thing here, if you uh, come to end of this note, it says exam tip. Just before the note five, it says exam tip. Personal allowance will be nil if adjusted net income is 121,200 or more, all right? So 121,200 and more, if you remember from your last lesson, uh, we saw it that if you deduct 121,200, uh, what you need to do is, we'll take the adjusted net income. So if adjusted net income is 121,200, we take the 100,000 pound threshold out of it, and the remaining one will be 21,200. If we divide that by two, it comes to 10,600. So if normal personal allowance is 10,600, if we deduct this one out of that, the uh, personal allowance uh, will be nil. The reduced personal allowance will be nothing, and you will not get any personal allowance. I did a mistake in the last lesson. I wrote this figure as 121,600 or 800, I think. Please make sure you rectify this. I beg uh, your pardon for that, because I did some mistake. It is 121,200. You can simply do it by multiplying 10,600 multiplied by 2. Uh, uh, whatever it is, it, it is uh, equal to 21,200. So when your income is 121,200 and more than that, then you will not be, get any personal allowance because your reduced personal allowance will be 10,600. And you remember, please remember that income uh, personal allowance can only reduce your uh, uh, your personal allowance cannot go into negative. So for example, if your income is more than 121,200, your personal allowance will maximum it can go uh, to zero. It cannot go into negatives. All right. Uh, next note is a uh, child benefit uh, income tax charge. We will see it in the next lecture, and uh, that's it for this lecture, and uh, I will see you in the next lecture then. Thank you very much, and bye.